Um, John, why don't you go first and uh, introduce yourself and your background, um, and then we'll, then we'll go over to Christian. Sure. My name is John Ross. I'm the president uh, of uh, the, the chair of the board for CADS National. Uh, I've been involved uh, in ski racing um, on the escarpment in Ontario, north of, of Toronto, and you all know quite well. Um, for 34 years, I was the head of uh, race crew A at uh, Georgian Peaks for almost 20 years. And I did my first uh, IPC World Cup event in 2008 in Whistler. It was a precursor event necessary in order to be part of the crew. I was a, a, a section chief um, at the, the Vancouver Olympic Games. And I also uh, was an official at the Sochi Games. I've done a number of World IPC World Cup events, uh, both in Canada and in Europe. Um, and uh, I've been on the board with CADS for, this is my seventh year and, and last year. Um, and I've been on the board for Sport for Life uh, for six years. And I'm a volunteer with Dog Guides Canada. Um, uh, I, I love being in this community. I love being in this space. Um, and I'm, it's been a really fun ride. I, uh, I decided after the Vancouver Olympics that I wanted to become a coach. Um, and and at, at 52, this might not have been the wisest thing for me to, to try and tackle. It's, it's a tough slog. And there are certain, you know, performances that you have to be able to do in order to get the, the EL trained and the EL certified and the EL para um, qualifications, some of which were I found quite challenging, but I did manage to do it. I've been uh, involved in the, the CADS Learn to Race program at Craig Leith for about eight or nine years now. And I've been involved in with the OPAS, which is the Ontario Para Alpine Ski Team and the National Development Team for about the last three or four years, just in assistance and, 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 and helping in any way that I can. Um, I have an amazing wife who tolerates me and has for <laughs> a long time. And I have three wonderful daughters. That's me. I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Hi, my name is Christian Harab. It's not my, it says on the screen CADS National Office. That's because I'm using the National Office account. I'm the executive director for CADS. Um, Here's a little bit of my profile. I'm an accomplished sports leader. I'm confident enough to say I am. Uh, I'm a certified high performance snowboard coach and I'm a level four snowboard instructor. So I used to be a, a snow lover before I became an office coach like I am now. I'm a CADS course conductor level one for snowboard. I'm a former national team athlete, coach, and program director. I was an Olympic team program director during the Vancouver Games. I was technical analyst in Torino 2006 and a coach in Salt Lake City in 2002. My specialty was speed events. I wasn't a freestyle guy. I like speed. Uh, I'm also a long-term athlete development advisor for Sport for Life, which is a, an arm of Sport Canada. And I am a father of two ninjas. They are now three years old and almost six years old. They love skiing. They love snow. In the winter, they ask for summer. And in the summer, they ask for winter. So uh, I'm building the next generation. There was, there was thanks, Christian. Thanks, John. There, there was some interest when we, we, we always do surveys after we run these. And one of the topics that, that came up was actually performance sports. Um, so just just to just to spend a minute on that because you you're both both accomplished in that, um, you, Christian. You're you're um, you know from all of that experience, which is impressive. You know how does how does doing what you're doing now? How does it how does it translate? Like how do you draw on all of that rich experience in in the Olympics and and the highest end of sport um, and bring it to adaptive? Like what's the how do you how does it how does it connect for you? You know, I, I, I prepared an answer that, that says nothing is impossible. If we keep an eye on where we want to go and we're driven by fun, 
then we get there. But you know, hearing hearing you ask the question, how does it connect? How does what we do at CADS and, and you guys connect to the Olympics? The connection is, it just came clear to me just now, the connection is about the passion for snow. It's about the passion for for skiing or snowboarding. For me, it's snowboarding. It's, I still I still dig skiing. It's okay. Ski with a <laughs> kid. Don't tell anyone, but don't tell my snowboard friends. But the the connection is exactly the same because to to take an athlete to an athlete or even a coach to a team of coaches to the Olympics, you've got to be absolutely obsessed with the sport and into trying to be better every waking moment of your life it's tw- it's a 24-hour job to be a, an olympian uh coach athletes support team staff everything it's the same thing uh and uh you know in cads it's the same thing we're driven because we love snow and we want to create opportunities for others to experience this love of snow so that's the connection right on and john you you, you mentioned this a little bit in, in your introduction um, about, you know, coming to it later in life, like you, you guys, you know, you come at it from a different perspective. Um, you did that, you know, a lot of, a lot of good work in your, in your fifties, congrats, like a pretty amazing congratulations. But how about for you? Like a, when you think about performance sport and, uh, well, tell, one, of thing, one of the things, Paul, that we, we worked on, uh, in my early days on the CADS board, uh, was establishing a real framework with both Canada's snowboard and with uh, Alpine Canada, Alpine. And we, we wanted to make sure that uh, we had a pathway for potential athletes or, 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 or athletes, uh, participants that wanted to become athletes. And, and so we, we worked very closely with these organizations to establish a pathway for them uh, that made sense for them. And, and subsequently we are on both of their long-term athletic um, pathway for the, the para uh, performance athletes. And we're in the first two categories. And uh, so we work very, very closely with both of these organizations. Um, and in fact, you know, I just got word last week, uh, one of the first uh, two athletes that I, that I coached, started coaching years ago are, are both going to Beijing. So that's, you know, that's very rewarding and, and it's very rewarding for them as well. I mean, a lot of people aren't, aren't aware that this framework has been established and it, and it is, it's very real. And, you know, we've got, we've got uh, a track three former athlete in, in Abby who, um, who's, you know, is in, has just been established in, in the next generation program. And although she has an outside chance of going to Beijing just just for the experience just because she's young she's I think she's still only 17 maybe now yeah sounds right um so it would just give her and, and Rebecca another young you know three tracker uh the opportunity to, to to feel the pressure of a Paralympic or Olympic experience and and you know I don't think if if Alpine Canada makes a decision to take those two athletes that it'll be with very little expectations, but it'll give them an opportunity to prepare for Cortina in in 2026. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really well laid out plan and, and we're always looking, we're always on the hunt for, you know, potential uh, athletes for the, for the para pathway. Nice. That's great. I know. And I saw Brenda on earlier and Brenda, it's great, great. You're here. Abby. I mean, I think about, the connection that Brenda had with Abby in the early days of getting, uh, getting her going and, and what a, what an amazing kid. Um, just brilliant. So, you know, that's not our, our raison d'etre at track three, but it's, it's kind of cool when, you know, and over time. And, and over, that they, 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 they do pop up and it's, it's, I think it's pretty fulfilling for, for those athletes and the, with the, with those, those desires and, and those particular skills. So, so really neat. Okay, let's let's get into it in terms of talking about uh, about track three and CADS. Um, the uh, maybe maybe just a little bit from me first. We we have um, uh, we about a year ago uh, last spring, the board brought in brought in John and Christian and and talked about the opportunities. We we had been working with CADS 
um, I think importantly, like just realize the history, right? Just we done we done quite a bit of work together. Um, mm -hmm. Mike Mike Stag, who's on, um, talked about the, uh, you know, not, not that this was primarily it, it's a it's a CADS thing, but there was track three people that were kind of extract three people like Austin, who's also on, but but other track three people that were were going up to national capital to help out with veterans clinics. Uh, we were working together even in the states on U.S. veterans programs. Um, we were doing spinal cord injury. We were we were we were talking about we we used the um, the excellent uh, uh, course conductor uh, Michelle on on snowboard training two years ago. Uh, had a really good experience with that. Um, so we had we had and we have we have actually a quite a quite a reasonable um, common membership. Uh, whether that's you know people like me that are you know CADS members or you know, pe people that move like, like, uh, you know, whether it's an Austin or a Mike or what have you and, and that mobility. Um, so anyway, we, 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 we had a really good discussion with, with Kristen and John and, and, and the awareness that we had was we are, we're a lean, mean volunteer organization with a, with a really, I mean, I think a really rich history, but uh, none of which we really want to trade off in terms of our uniqueness and, and the focus we have on, on uh, both geographically and on the youth segment or kids um, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to give that up. We, we, we want to be unique, but what we found in talking to uh, Christian and John was that, you know, that wasn't, we didn't have to. And, and so we, we could be better. Like the idea was if there was a national adaptive sport organization and we're a provincial, uh, very focused, uh, uh, excellent sport organization on, on, um, youth with, with different kinds of challenges, well, maybe, maybe the, there could be something here to strengthen, um, our partnership. We look, and we we're talking about things like use of technology, uh, harmonization on on training, where we use a lot of precious uh, volunteer resources. Uh, not and and here, not 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 trading off and giving up our uh, the the rich tradition we have in training, but but you know, but combining forces and and valuing what what we've done in the past. Um, there's other areas like in, in insurance, uh, for example, and 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 maybe even programming, where uh, we we you know we 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 all have wait lists, um, or we have kids that age out in our programs uh, who could be served in in a, in a CADS program, that kind of thing. So we we've been exploring this, and uh, we we you know I, I'll, I'll say that quite a bit of work's been done. We the probably one of the more important things for that, that I would speak of is that we we broke off and did quite a bit of, of benchmarking and talk to the different divisions across the country. And we were exploring the, frankly, the areas of concern, like, and, and you know, do, cause we kind of went into it with the standpoint of, we don't want to give up who we are. And uh, the, I, I'll, I'll say that I didn't find in, in talking to any of the CADS organizations, like that they felt like they didn't have their own autonomy to, to be who they were um, and to be contributing to something greater and better. So, so this has moved along and, and we're, uh, we're we're really really interested, quite interested in moving it forward. The board has said from from day one, and I talked about it at the AGM last fall, is that you know transparency is really important on this, and we wouldn't go forward without the support of the Track Three membership. Um, even if it's even if it's not a you know we're not talking about a takeover, we're not talking about merging our balance sheet with CADS, we're not talking about anything like that. But we're talking about a partnership. But we still think having our membership on side is is a critical part of it because we're you know it's a membership driven volunteer driven organization. So you know they think this is all positive. So part of this transparency is this session and getting getting Christian and John out and talking about CADS and getting getting our our folks out to to at least have the initial conversation here um, in in terms of the opportunities and and maybe the concerns. Um, that, that people would have. So, so, so that's what we're, we're going to try and do in the next uh, um, just about half an hour. And if we need more time, Christian and John have, have generously said that they'd be happy to do another session. We know summers are hard, um, but that, that's, that's the background from, from my perspective. Um, and I, I hope that's, I hope that's helpful. Um, so, so let's, let's um, maybe, maybe to John and Christian, you, you guys, um, you, you've, you've got, a um, maybe just, maybe just tell us a little bit about CADS. Um, and Christian, I think, I think maybe, do you want, do you want to lead off here? Um, or, or John, who, who's, who's got this one? I'm looking at my, my cheat sheet here. And well, if we're talking about the history, I got this, John, you got that. Yeah. Give us a little John, history. And I love the history of CADS. So I'd be happy to share the history with you guys. So from what, from what I understand of CADS, 
CAD started as a ski week party week in the 1970s. And I've seen pictures and it is exactly what it is. It's a, it's a party week for people who love skiing. I've seen a lot of ski pictures of people in the 70s skiing and party weeks. The only difference is the pictures for CADs is people with disabilities. So uh, they would actually, the, the, the hub of CAD started at Sunshine Village in Alberta. And the ski school director at Sunshine Village actually not disabled himself, but actually became part of the population. I see uh, Michael's got a hand up, but it's, that's not Michael. Michael's gone. So he's got a hand up, but he's, he's gone. Okay, he's back. Okay. Mike, do you have a do you have a question, a comment on history, or it's just no, a... no, no. Keep going with the history, and then I, when the questions come, I have a question. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. So the ski school director saw this bunch of party guys <laughs> with disabilities and uh, wanted to get involved and help them ski better. So his name was where is his name? Jerry Johnson. Jerry Johnson. So he created the Alberta Association for Disabled Skiing, which eventually became CAD. So from the Alberta Association for Disabled Skiing, it, it branched off to different provincials, provincial associations. It became the uh, Canadian Association for Disabled Skiing. And their goal was really to improve the, the, op the equipment and the techniques to learn how to ski. From there too, there was, there was a rate. He who likes skiing likes to go fast, and he who likes to go fast likes to go faster than your buddy. So they started having a race program within CADS, which is quite natural. I always try to be the fastest guy on the snow. And, um, and then they, they started populating running and populating the Paralympic team. So CADS was running the national uh, uh, Paris Alpine, what's, what's it called? The Para Alpine ski team for years until 2004. And then in 2004, the Alpine ski team went to Alpine Canada. It made a lot of people in CAD sad to lose that, that part of the heritage. I mean, racing's cool too, but uh, much better for athlete development to be integrated with, with all the sophisticated and, and knowledge of the, of the national ski team. Um, another big point in, in the CAD's history is in 2015, which is not too long ago, CADS added the curriculum to teach skiing to persons with uh, on the autism spectrum disorder dis, with autism spectrum disorders and cognitive impairments. That just started in 2015 and it took three years and it became 60% of our student membership. In CADS, we call them students because everybody in the program is learning to ski or learning to ski better. I know you guys call them athletes. Um, which is difficult for me having trained athletes as a coach, but it's fine. Uh, I'm just saying that. But uh, so people with autism and, and cognitive impairments is the majority of our student membership now. We added uh, snowboard to our curriculum in 2016. So it's all real fresh. We changed our name in 2017 for two reasons. One, it said skiing only. I was the first one that said, hey, do we do snowboarders too? And everybody said, of course we do. I said, well, it says for skiing. So we changed that. And then it was the word disabled, which we're moving away from and it's adaptive. So we are now Canadian adaptive snow sports, but we kept our acronym CADS. Um, I got hired in 2015 and uh, Amy Royer, the operations manager got hired in 2018. And in 2021, 2022, we will uh, partner up with o Ontario Track 3 and we will write the next 40 years together. Excellent, thanks, Chris. Hey, uh, John, I, I, I talked about this, my impressions on the, on the structure um, of CAD. So, so having the history um, you've you've got the board chair, and, and you really you really understand, uh, along with Christian, how how CADS really works. Did it, the part I got about autonomy and the way the division uh, divisions work? Did, did I get it right? And 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 maybe just anything else you want to add on on the sort of the overall structure and how CADS works? Yeah, you you definitely got it right, Paul. We're we're a membership driven organization. You know, in recent years, we are looking you know, to alternate uh, 
you know, revenue opportunities. But historically, we had been a, a membership-driven organization, and and our our purpose as a national organization is to support our divisions, not to tell them what to do, but to make sure that they have the tools necessary to run their operations safely and properly insured, and in our case, properly certified. And again, something that that we want to work with track three on, and and we've already formulated a group, as you're well aware, uh, of experts. Thank you, Bren. Getting a cup of tea. Um, And, uh, you know, this this formulation is it's going to be a team. It's not going to be us telling track three or track three telling us, because I believe we both have a lot to learn from each the way each of us, you know, perform the task and certify our instructors. So I'm, I'm excited about that as a, as a prospect. Um, you know, historically we've had our, our, our TC, our technical committee, which is made up of, of participants from across the country, uh, of experts, a, a, a panel of experts, and they've, they've made changes to the curriculum and to the certification over the years. Um, based on what they felt the CSIA was expected, uh, we, we tried to follow the CSIA format and, uh, and basically because we get input from people from all over the country, you, you know, when we finally come up with a decision, it's usually universally a, a great way to move forward for, for our, our course conductors and instructors. And we don't expect this to be any different. When we when we work together with Track Three, that you know we're we're going to take what you do. I'm a Track Three instructor. My wife, as you well aware, acknowledged Brenda is a Track Three instructor and has been for years. Um, there's some things that you guys do that I just love. So I, I don't see any reason why we can't take the best of, of both organizations, just the same way we've done in 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 our history. Uh, organizations from across the country and and take the best of all of them and and move forward uh the other thing i you know i want to i want to touch base on is, uh, your history and it, it's it is very well known in ontario um maybe not so much in other parts of the country but certainly in ontario very well known and very well respected and we we have no intention as a national organization of telling you how to brand or how to how to do anything? We're going to make suggestions of what we've seen from other organizations, bigger, smaller, um, but we're going to make suggestions that we think might help. But we're not going to tell you anything. You're your own organization. We're hoping that when this all comes to fruition, you will be a division of of CADS National, just like some of our so many talented divisions, but you will have autonomy uh, and and the same privileges that you've always had as as a as just track three. But we think we bring some real benefits to the table that you can take advantage of. Go ahead, Chris. I love I love this virtual hand up. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, your point, Paul, about independence is that uh, CADS really is the sum of approximately 70 different organizations across the country. We don't run a franchise model like McDonald's or Subway where everyone's a subsidiary and a replicant of of the the home base. CADS has got one national organization. It's got 10 provincial divisions, including National Capital Division, which is not quite a province. Kind of should be. Ottawa's kind of central, but nevertheless, um, it's 10. And in all across all of those, there's about 60 different clubs. So real and all of them, all these organizations have their own board, their own fundraising. Uh, they all follow the same curriculum, teaching methodology and standards. But nevertheless, they are independent organizations. And it's a collaboration between these organizations. There's a server leader relationship. But really, to me, CADS is 70 organization, not CADS National and everybody following in line behind that. Okay, good. All right. Well, look, that's great. Thank you for that. And I, I do. I want to. I like. I like. I like what both you said. I don't. The only, and I, I like that you're. You're both 
projecting optimistically. I just, I want to be respectful to say that we're not there yet, which, but we're, yeah, we we're, know that. we're yeah. Cause I, you know, I, I think that our membership would, would say, well, well, hold on. You know, like the, I, I, th I think I said at the beginning, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have, have that uh, respect that voice in terms of who we are and what we're, how we're built. So that's great. So um, Jen, do you want, do you want to, do you want to jump in now with, with your question and, and I'll maybe just get folks to, um, to put their hands up as well. And I'm happy to, to make this really interactive. Um, uh, sure. And, and for those, there's many of you on the call who remember Mike and I from our days in Jack Free. And our, I think I was, oh my gosh, Jack was probably home, Kathy, but I am. I think it was close to 20 years in Jack Free before we moved to Ottawa. Uh, and that, and we're in, we're in National Capital Region. Uh, Michael uh, teaches on the Quebec side and he runs a program on the Canadian side on that very side. Oops. Canadian. Oh, there you go. Oh, did you yeah. say Canadian side? That's funny. That's right. Diplomacy oh, at its finest. That's très drôle. Ça, c'est très drôle. Oui, oui. There, I do think... <laughs> Sorry. Um, I do think there's a, a tremendous opportunity for cats to learn from Track 3. I, I think Track 3 has been able to um, take their fundraising model, for example, and now they have a centralized fundraising model that then supports the individual hills, uh, their, their equipment sharing model that they have. So there's no real hill ownership of, of equipment and things like that are, are things that CADs could benefit from. I know National CAD Division, a lot of our hills get stressed trying to maintain the fundraising side of things while at the same time maintaining the um, participant ratio and all the things that are required with running programs. Um, the one question though I had, Paul, was you mentioned the insurance. Piece. And and one of the other differences that I understood with uh, between CAD and Track Three is, is at least for National Capital Division, uh, we refer to all of our members as participants. Uh, we actually don't have students; we have participants. We don't have instructors; we have participants. And it was explained to me by one of the folks in the leadership here in National Capital Division who's in the insurance world, and that is because of the insurance. Uh, whereas in track three, we actually do have certified instructors, we have certified assistants and, and, and support staff, and, and they're qualified at different levels. And track three does that to make sure that its insurance is, is properly honored. So when we merge the, the concept of insurance, and I certainly understand some of the economic benefits of joining a national organization with 60, 70 plus organizations, you know, there, there's, there's, there's uh, efficiencies in numbers when it comes to insurance. Um, but if one program doesn't have instructors and the other program does, how like is that factoring into the insurance question? <laughs> Just Dan. <laughs> thanks for the question, Jen. No, thanks gonna, for the question. It, it's a good question. I, I think maybe there's some some uh, things there that aren't quite correctly understood. I'm going to actually let because <laughs> I can see Chris is chomping at the bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, you might have been misled a little bit here, but I'll let Chris. I'll let Chris take this. Yeah, I, I, maybe we can segue off the point of independence. <laughs> There's a lot of independence out there. Um, we track, just so you know, we track our membership through uh, students, someone taking a lesson, volunteer, someone who is not a certified instructor, instructor, if someone is a certified instructor, we track also membership, we have membership categories for friends, families, and caregivers. So the term participant has nothing to do with insurance requirements, none whatsoever. And course conductors. And we have course conductors, but we don't, remember, we don't track membership through course conductors. We do no. have that status as well. But so uh, no, the terminology of, of who's in the zoo makes no difference. Okay. It's how we do it, not what we're called. Good. Thanks for the question, Jen. That's great. Dan Daniel, you've got your hand up too. Do you want to, do you want to jump in? But Daniel, we've got you on mute, I think. Can you, can you come off mute? Do you... He's looking for the button. Unmute. There we go. Is that it? We, okay. Yeah. So, um, sorry. I just, use this opportunity to say thanks too to the our track three people. I'll give an example. I'm Dan Fleming from the National Capital Division. Uh, 25 years I was with CAS. Uh, we went to the States. We used to go down to the States and help their injured soldiers. 
the program at Snowmass Colorado. And I see Austin Watts on here and Mike, uh, I'm not sure if Mike's been there before, but uh, many of the participants uh, from Canada have gone down to help their program. Uh, and when we were down there, we uh, were asking ourselves, all the Canadians, there was uh, a dozen to 20 Canadians helping out down there. We're asking ourselves, why aren't we doing that for our soldiers and so on? So we came back and created a program here, a winter sports clinic for injured soldiers. We run it out of Calabogie, but they also run one out of Snowmass, Colorado. They've run them out of Quebec as well. And, and there was one of uh, the Maritimes. In any case, uh, through that time, we've increased our participations, participation from the military members from about, uh, I think the first year we had about eight. Uh, the, the last year, and we were in the 10 years now, we've run the program. We were up to uh, almost 50 injured soldiers, and we have a spousal program that brings a spouse as well. But during that period, uh, we've had to recruit a lot of instructor volunteers and so on to help out with that clinic. And Track 3 in Ontario here have uh, provided us with, with a, you know, a couple of sort of competent people here, like uh, Austin Watt and, and <laughs> Peter Klinkman and, uh, and, and so on. So the first thing is an opportunity to say thank you from our program here, the Winter Sports Thanks, to all the volunteers that came out of Track 3 to help us run this program. But it's also an example of how we can work together in anything like this here. We can put programs on. Uh, join the join each other in, in running these kind of programs. And as uh, Chris had just said about the 70 some odd ind almost independent programs we run under the umbrella of CADS, that's what we are. We have to raise our own fund, all our own money and so on. The same as all of your track three people have to raise theirs. Like you've got Kitchener, you've got uh, uh, all, um, Craig Leaf and so on, all them, they individually raise the funds there. So I think that this participation or this partnership should work very easily. And I would, I would hope, and especially with the example of your guys in our program here at Winter Sports Clinic, for 10 years we've run that. And for, I think nine of them, we've had uh, track three people, actually Bob Gilmore was one, was one of the guys that were uh, started it with us. He was the actually the mastermind behind it all, but uh, he ran the track three program in Kitchener for years before coming right. back to CADS in Ottawa. So fantastic, Dan. That's thanks a lot. Amazing. That's that's yeah. that's great. I really appreciate that. And, and I, if, I it, if I may add to that, um, and you may not be aware of this, but uh, visas, which is Vancouver Island visas, Vancouver no, Island sports, sports ad, adaptive something, whatever. The CADS, the CADS I only refer to as the CADS program on Vancouver Island. Yes. And it's, it takes place um, on Vancouver Island. And every year, they, we are very closely associated and working with Soldier On. And I did, I did the Soldier On week. It, it's a week-long event uh, on, on Vancouver Island at Mount Washington. And I did it eight years ago or nine years ago. And the year that I did it, we had uh, at, at least four or five dozen vets and and some of their families and it's just a phenomenal bonding experience and again as part of our our, our umbrella these these things we welcome anyone who wants to spend a week on vancouver island skiing at mount washington which i i used to have property out there and i can tell you it's the most beautiful beautiful place on planet earth it's the top of mount washington you've got a view like you can't imagine and and it's a fabulous as dan said an amazing bonding experience and i know some of your track three people have done this in colorado with with a terrific success and 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 a lot of fun and this is just another string to the bow great thanks for that um yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I said earlier that the, um, I, th I think that the, you know, there's lots of examples of where we have worked together. And I think what we've done for veterans and, you know, Jack's on and uh, Jack Sim is on and he's, he's been a, a good, a good leader and sort of bridged the organizations as well. Um, thinking about sort of serving the broader uh, community, right. And, and growing, um, growing our ability to take care of, of people with special needs. And so running a program over at Blue Mountain and, um, so it, it actually, it's, I, I think it's for us to see track three people helping more people, whether they're veterans, 
right? Taking the skills that that they've learned with us and focusing on kids and 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 helping helping uh, adults or 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 veterans or or getting those other programs off the ground that are serving um, the the community of of people that have needs. I, I think that's that's tremendous. So um, so so thanks thanks for for weighing in on that. Um, anyone from the track three side want to want to bring forward a perspective on this? I know I know. Um, I know like to, to put it out there, the, sometimes the elephant in the room, right? Some of the history is um, that we're, we're, we're kind of like, we're, we're unique, we're special. Like we're not, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to have an alliance here, right? Like that's just, that's some of the, you know, I've, I've been involved with track three for about 20 years and, and, and I, I know this, I know there's, there's some, there are some concerns. So um, Brenda, you got your hand up. Is that, am I reading that right? Brenda Brooks. You're on. Do you want to come off mute? Hi, sorry about that. No problems. Um, yeah, I, I've been doing track three for 23 years, and I think it's great that the CADS guys have done their, um, you know, Olympic thing and veteran thing. And we look after not to be disrespectful, and I don't hope this doesn't come across that way, but um, I think track three, we look after our community. We look after the kids who live in our neighborhoods. We look after the kids who um, grow up in Toronto and Collingwood and various places whose only activity and only opportunity to get out play a sport is to be skiing or boarding with track three. And I think that's why people like Jack have started the program at Blue Mountain to expand that and that's why people like me and Glenn Clark and others have joined the Blue Mountain family as well as the Track 3 family because we want to have those community members to experience some kind of athletic activity. So while I think that the CADS uh, group is uh, incredibly well connected and it's very national um, and thank you for the call out to Abby but I also taught Melanie Schwartz how to ski too. And she's been to two sets of Olympics. So um, not just to toot my horn, but track three does some really amazing things. And we have amazing instructors and we have amazing program directors and volunteers. And I think that I'm very proud of that and I'm very protective of that. And while I'm very open to um, collaborative, I don't want to get swept under the rug. I don't want us to get um, um, taken over by anybody. I'll be that blunt and say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Hey, Brenda, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for, for doing, for saying that. I, I think, I think we're actually, we're, we're not, um, we're not disagreeing with you, by the way. Like that's, that, that would be, that would be my concern too. Right. Like I, I, I think that's, that's kind of the part of the principles and the ground rules, um, that we have, uh, in, in looking at this, right. That we can, we can maintain who we are and, and and not give that up, right? Yeah. So a good example, I'll, I'll throw it out there. I mean, a good example for us is, and and I was interested in Jen's question on the how we define things. I mean, what I know works, and and we've we've made this really clear in 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 the discussions we've had. What I know works really well for us is our level one training, like just just the nature of the population we serve, and the fact that we and I've you know we've talked about. Um, how, how, you know, we get, we get brilliant young kids when we have them for three years. Um, you know, the, the kind of training that we can, we can do for, and by the way, they'll, they'll come back on their March breaks. And then when they get married or what some of further life stage, ideally we can get them back again or I mean, whatever happens, right? Like it's people, people come back, but we, uh, we'd be very reluctant to give that up because, you know, we, we know it works for us. Right. And, and, and the, you know, we need to, to serve the population, the nature of our of our business is there's turnover. So anyway, so as we look at at training and, and ways to do it better, uh, we're not you know there we we, would, we kind of lay down the the ground rules of what we we have to hang on to, and 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 that would be a good example of something that that we've come up with right. And so that one for you know could be that it it serves the broader community and you know the the. Tech, the technical committee working with uh, the, the track three technical committee working with the CADS technical committee could could find a way where other other hills may, may want to adopt some of that approach because um, we do it well 
and I, I agree with everything you said in terms of our, you know, the pride we have and what we do. Um, it's not, it's not, we're, I, we don't, we're not looking to, to, to take any of that away. I, I'd like to just address that. I, I went through it. I think, uh, I think you guys do that better than, than CADS. We lean on a one day uh, intro through Alpine Canada, which we've had, I would say, mediocre success with. And I, I would like to think that our technical people on both sides of the highest level of the committee that we've put together are going to realize that that, that that is something that we should look seriously at. And maybe it gets modified a little bit in, in the end by these experts. I'm not sure. I'm not that expert. But I, I wanted to more than just address that. And I'll let Chris step in in a minute. I wanted to address Brenda's comment about being swept under the carpet. We don't have any of our 67 membership organizations swept under any carpet. We are there to help them. We are there if they want to take on some, some aspects of our, our, our resources, great. If they don't want to take on all of our aspects of our resources, we would encourage them to look at them unless they can figure out a better way to do it, and in which case we take that information to heart. So NCD, as much as it is part of CADS, um, it's NCD. It's, it's, they keep, they've got some very unique programs and they're fantastic and they run them their way, but they run them with our, our certified instructors. That's the only difference between, and I wouldn't want to take, I wouldn't want to take anything away from track three. You know, I've been involved, you know, Paul, you and I, we've, we've talked for the last couple of years. Uh, I talked to your, your predecessor, um, you know, Paul, Paul won. And, and you know what, we, all we want to do is make both organizations better. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, okay. Um, I think we need to adjust our language and how we speak because if anyone has the impression that we're, that we're taking over an organization, then we are sending the wrong message. We're not communicating properly. We, we, Paul mentioned the, observed the, the concept of independence that the, the, um, the, and the conglomerate of all the organization also means a respect for culture. And I want to give you the example of the culture for volunteers in British Columbia, CAS British Columbia, and there are 12 clubs, and the culture for volunteers in Alberta, and there are about eight or nine clubs. Um, in British Columbia, 100% of the volunteers working, volunteering in CAS programs are fully certified. 100%. So they have a, they have a, a, a zero... Um, they have a culture where they want to go through the certification process. People are evaluated against a, a benchmark like you guys, evaluation certification. And in Alberta, it's less than 50% of the volunteers who are certified instructors. Certified meaning evaluated and met the standards. You all know what certification means. So that difference alone I hope illustrates that we respect the culture of organizations. BC wants to go a certain direction, doesn't change the standards of, of, and the quality of curriculum, but we respect those cultures. And I wanna make sure that we don't come across as, as a, a, a corporate organization. The other thing I wanna provide just a bit of more clarity to is that I know John and I's profile come from the high performance Paralympic world but really, that's about 2% of the CAS activity, really two. We were close to prov with Alpine Canada to provide opportunities for people who want to, uh, as I always say, ski faster, ski better, but people who's got the, who have that competitive spark, we can send them along the way, we, we have that partnership, but that's really 2% of our activities. We are about participation, we're about the first stages of of being active for life, active start awareness, active start, learning the, the fundamentals. Um, 
I would, I don't have the exact, exact numbers. I was trying to pull them up, but I think 80% of our membership is uh, student membership, participant membership is people who barely learn to ski or who will probably never be independent or who actually are just working towards potential independence. But the intermediate skiers and the advanced skiers, we don't have any of them. So just wanted to, to make sure that I clarify we're not taking over and I hope our personal profiles do not kind of over overshadow the, the what CADS actually does. Thanks, Christian. I, 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 maybe I should have been more clear about talking about that. I was trying to, uh, we're, we're really here to talk about CADS and track three and the possibilities of working together, but we, we did have this, this survey input, um, that was just showing some interest in performance. So that's why, that's why I kind of asked those questions as mm -hmm. a bit of an icebreaker, okay. Okay. but it might've, it might've, it might've confused the, the topic a bit. Um, you know, we're not, we're not really looking at sort of, you know, there's no idea, there's no idea to change our, our MO, right. That we want, we want track three to be a, a training ground for high performance athletes. That's not, that's not our, the, the point is not that at all. Right? The point is yeah. the point is, you know, and yeah, perfect. So, so sorry if that was, if that was a little, uh, a little uh, unclear for folks. It was, it was really just, uh, I mean, it's part, part of who you guys are. And I think a neat part of who you, who you are. And I, th I think who you, how you apply it in your, in your, in your passion you take the you take the passion you have, and and we all do this, right? We are we're all coming. Uh, what I found anyway is that we come to adaptive sport, each of us for a different reason, um, and then we you know we get we get sucked into the the wonderful you know beauty of it, and and the yeah, just you know you're it's a, you know it's about helping people uniquely, and you know we we get we just you know we get we always say we get paid in smiles, and and we do right, and that's why the yeah. last year's sucked more than anything is there's been no smiles but um yeah, yeah so anyway i'm really glad we i'm really glad we ended up with a with a good conversation i'm sure there's i'm sure there's more conversation to be had well, george, on george's got a question and brenda's got a question again As i don't I know that brenda's hand went down so I'll, I'll go i'll go to george first and um but yeah, if, his if, hand up as well just just before George jumps in, I, I don't want to talk. George, you go first. I don't know how to put freaking hand on the screen, so I'm just using mine. Okay, go ahead. So my hand is up. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go I'll, ahead let, I'll let George I'll let George has his say and I'll jump in after him. All Thanks. right, George. Um, hey Paul. Hey guys. Uh, sorry, I jumped on late, but but um, I, I did want to clarify. Mm -hmm. So um, like to to um, to continue um, Brenda's uh, comment about, you know, swept under the rug or, or a concern about um, ads being or, or track three being lost amongst the, the mass of, uh, of CADs. Th that's something as part of the um, um, as part of the group that looked at this on the board, we were very sensitive to and we asked a lot of questions around that um, with that specific idea in mind. How do we ensure that we we maintain you know the culture that we've built over over the past few years. Um, uh, we we maintain some of the strengths that we have, and and we don't pick up any sort of weaknesses that might exist. And we went out and we spoke to you know maybe you guys have touched on this already, but but we a did, lot yeah. of the different chapters, and and asked them specifically about that. Is there any concern? And you know I I feel like every time we asked it, and every way that we asked it. Uh, we got really positive messages back about flexibility, about choice and autonomy for um, each chapter that, that um, you know, would, would allow track three to maintain, uh, you know, a lot of the, the many strengths that we have today and, and allow us to grow as an organization, both from, you know, that, that power of, of being part of a, a greater economies of scale for financial things like, like insurance, like technical uh, systems, member management systems, that type of thing. Um, but, but also having a greater group of, of technical individuals getting together and, and working together on, on um, the training. I was uh, totally wowed and, and blown away by the training I experienced getting my level one uh, snowboard CADs uh, right on, with Michelle dude. and, and and um, you know, I I, uh, I really was impressed, especially by the the documentation. And not to take anything away from Track Three's documentation, but you know, we just haven't spent as much time or resources on it as you guys have. 
And, and I was really impressed by that. And that's a prime example of something where, yeah, you're a bigger organization. There's a bigger pool of money. There's, a, there's more people that are able to spend the time on that. So you, you've been able to build that up over the years. And, you know, there's, there's um, as far as I can tell, so many benefits. Um, and, but just to get back to Brenda, if there is anything that, Brenda, that you think we've missed in that evaluation, you know, we want to hear about it. We want to know about it, but we want to know specifics because swept on the, the rug is kind of, you know, it, it, it doesn't really explain what you mean. W what is it that you would be concerned about with regards to being swept under the rug? Is it our brand identity? Is it the fact that, you know, now we're a, a smaller fish in a, in a much bigger pond? Or is there some specific aspect of the track three family and way of life that, that you're, you're concerned about would be my question. Back to Brenda. Uh, Brenda, if I could, if I could just step in, part of what I was going to say, I think, I think it addresses a little bit of, of the hesitancy on some of the people with Track Three. Uh, I, I guess I'm probably the senior statesman of this whole group now, and I've been very fortunate to be, uh, be across the board in a lot more parts of both organization as well as the program we're starting at Blue Mountain. But some people may or may not know is that Track 3 at one time was part of CADS way back in the early days. You automatically became a, a CADS member if you were a Track 3 member without any uh, anybody being asked if they were willing to be a, a CADS participant. Uh, without getting into the politics of all that, what happened at, in that era, there basically came a distrust between the people leading CADS at the time and Track 3, and it became a little bit of a Hatfields and McCoy type of deal, uh, where Track 3, up until even recently, not going that far back in history, uh, we would go to the uh, the CNIB day and there would be Track 3 instructors and CADS instructors and we would sit at different tables on different parts of the building. Uh, and that came from, from the old Hatfields and McCoys. We don't know why we don't like each other, but we're not supposed to like each other. And uh, so that extended for, for longer than it ever should have. And it's just recently that we're doing some cross-pollination, getting down to Snowmass where we met the CADS people uh, from the National Capital District, uh, doing the, the CNIB. We stopped sitting at different tables. We started sitting together. We started coordinating our instructors. So I, I think there still is that a little bit in the track three sort of mindset is that, oh, I don't know, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, as Brenda says, we're going to lose our identity. We're going to get we're going to get pushed away. The, uh, the quality of our training and how it was developed will, will lose it, uh, its, its sight or we'll lose sight of it and we'll get less say in it. But I think I know, uh, you know from the people that are meeting from the track three, uh, uh, you know, sort of technical training or instructor training are meeting with the CADS people. So that kind of thing is being addressed of, of where uh, historically the training has come from both sides and what what we need at track three, uh, we don't want to give up our level one because, uh, you know, frankly, I think personally, and and uh, just in case anybody else says no, I am on board of CADS Ontario, so I'm not picking sides here. But, uh, uh, you know, our level one is more inclusive for people who don't want to do a full training. So you can become an instructor in a weekend as opposed to, uh, you know, the CADS training is very good and it's very intense. But I think a lot of CADS people don't become instructors because they don't want to give up a week uh, to, to take that course. So we're talking yeah, about I'm that. with you on that, Jack. I'm with yeah, you so on we, that. we really are. Yeah. And we know. We, we want know. that as well for ourselves. We, we want your influence we, on our program for that. We've yeah. said it so to I, Paul and we've said it, you know, to other, other track three members. That, and again, we've taken two of your best and two of our best and they're going to we know it's not going to happen overnight. We know that come November or, you know, or December in Ontario, when everyone starts dreaming of skiing, that your, your whole program is going to be different. This is yeah. not what we're after. This is not where we're, we're we don't want it. We love your brand. We love the way you do yeah. things, but maybe there's some things that we do that we can bring to your table that are going to yeah, make you sure. guys better. For sure, John. I, and my point is just entirely, you know, towards Brenda's sort of con concerns is I that understand. there's conversations going on. It's not that, you know, if we join up a uh, partnership with CADS is all of a sudden everything we've got on the books disappears. There's a yeah. conversation of how we can both benefit from each other's uh, uh, good stuff. Yeah. 
two beneficiaries, not one beneficiary, one loser. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Thanks, Jack. That's that's great. Thanks, Jack. Who's next? Um, I know I know we're, we're we're a little over time here, but we started late, so we'll run run for just a few more minutes. Is there any anyone else that wants to um, to offer anything to the discussion? Comments, well, can concerns. I just, do you mind if I just jump in here? Since I started yeah. this, and my name's come up many times since I made my comment. Um, no, go for it. Uh, I really appreciate your comment, Paul, about um, setting the stage. And I think I came on to this call to learn about CADS. And I will be very frank in saying it felt like a very pro CADS conversation. And I feel much more comfortable now after having heard from you and from Christian and John that this isn't a takeover. Not that, you know, I was going that route. Um, and with, you know, Jack says there's history. I'm not that stuck in the past that I can't appreciate that we all need to move forward and that leveraging everybody's um, wonderful skill sets and connections is an absolutely phenomenal way to go. Mm. We all want the same end result. Mm. So to George's point about concern, I get the board has been talking to CADS. That's great. But you know what? I haven't been at the board level mm. and I haven't been on a meeting and there are probably other people on this call who just like me are coming in and want to hear what's being said mm. and the level setting of, Hey, this is two organizations that do the same thing that can actually be very complimentary and move forward together. That's terrific. And I'm all over it. So I just thought I would, um, after all of the back and forth thing, um, uh, after my comments, I'm glad I said what I said, because I'm pretty sure there's some people out there that feel as strongly as I do about how important our track three, and it's not just, it's a family. Let's be honest. We've got a wonderful track three family and we want to keep that going. I still think that, and I do think that we can do that with many different organizations to move forward. And I'm, I'm grateful that a number of us want to um, uh, feel that it's important enough to keep the track three name and the track three legacy living while leveraging what CADS and other organizations can offer. So hey, I hope Brenda, thanks I've a lot. Undone, I hope yeah, I've no. undone the negative that I might have shown. No, no, I, no, no, I, no, no. I, 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 hey, Brenda, I didn't, I didn't actually take a negative from your, your initial comments. I, 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 if I, people are I, thinking these things, Brenda, then we want to address them. And, you know, part of the reason we started our conversation three years ago now with Paul, with the previous Paul before this young man became your, your president was th there was some issues with insurance. There was, we were creating some real technical um, IT structures with new web designs that were interactive uh, membership services that were like second to none. And, and, you, you know, track three has tested Snowline and, and they've, I think the results have been, you know, quite favorable. And so we just thought, well, okay, maybe there's some, some footage here and maybe we can learn from you guys and maybe we can provide some things that will facilitate your jobs as volunteers. And, and not once have we ever even possibly alluded to having you not be anything but track three. Great. Thanks, John. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to get a little assertive in the, in the moderating just to make sure that we don't go too long here. So if, if I can, I, I may, I may start cutting people off if, if the answers are long or the, but anyway, um, let's go to, let's go to Chris and then we'll go to Doug and we'll see where we're at on, on timing. So Chris, Chris, you're up. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, I guess. Um, and Brenda, this is in response to your comments and, and well said and well put. Um, as a parent and a volunteer at Track 3, it's a special place for me and him and Tatum and has been for a number of years. Uh, so in entering the discussions with CADS, and I have been in discussions with them with Paul and with George, that was a big part of, of 
what, you know, it was important to all of us that we keep the identity of, of track three and, uh, and of our name and our history and all of that. And both John and Chris have been incredibly receptive to that. And in fact, have said, yeah, you're going to keep your name, you're going to keep your economy. But we've got, you know, there's economies of scale from a business perspective that we can share and make this a, you know, collectively better organization as a whole. Um, and they, they've got me convinced of that. Uh, and, and I think all of us, and, and we've had lots of discussions and I, it, it, kind of, it makes sense to me. Um, but, uh, but I hear your concerns and, uh, you know, I, I, you can be assured that, you know, I had the same concerns going into it as well. And I think Paul and George did George being a parent as well, uh, and a volunteer. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, I don't, from, from a personal perspective, perspective. I don't see a downside uh, from the discussions that we've had, but I mean, we'll, of course, we're going to open it up to a broader discussion within our membership. Uh, before so, uh, Perfect. Chris, thank you. That's, 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 that's great. So well said. Uh, Doug, you're, you're up next. Uh, thanks. Yeah. I just wanted to chime in and say, um, yeah, like George, I had the pleasure of doing the training with Michelle. Um, so yeah, I've been involved with track three snowboarding on and off since 2005, maybe, or something. Yeah, and thank you. It was, uh, there's some, some gaps in there for like school and stuff, but it's been there for, for a while. And it was really, really cool to have Michelle come help us with the training at the course connector weekend, because it was, you know, over the years, like we're kind of learning, we're all learning like, from each other over the years. And it was really, really cool to have like an outside person come in with these new ideas and new skills and new teaching techniques. and. I thought it was, a, it was an incredibly valuable experience. And yeah, like if we can get more of that happening in track three, and I mean, if we, if we can get Michelle back, that would be amazing. And she was, that was really, really cool. We'll share. And she was great. For sure. <laughs> we'll Doug, thanks. That's, that's great. That's really great. Um, Brad, you had, um, you had your hand up. Are you, I don't know if it's up anymore. So forgive me guys. I don't I need a bigger screen. I, I, I put it back down. It was, it was yeah, accidental. You're, you're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks hey, so. Brad, saying hi anyway. Take care. Um, good. Look, guys, I, I think we're, um, it's 8.15. I, what, I, what I'm going to suggest is I, I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot at a bit of a recap and tell you what I think what's next. And um, uh, what I think was, what's accomplished tonight was, was to get, get um, to broaden the conversation. And I want to, before I do anything, I want to, I want to thank uh, John and Christian for, for coming. Uh, on a summer Thursday and, and everyone's got a lot going on. John's doing, he's out in Calgary helping a friend and uh, he's on the road and, and uh, traveling and, and doing things and he made time for us. So thank you both. Um, I took a ton of positives out of this tonight and I, but I think it also, it's a reminder for us at track three that there's more work to do uh, just in you know, what we want. And I, I just assure everyone a hundred percent of this, what we want um as a board, we, our job is to take care of the membership and we know that. And so we want engagement from our membership on this, right. In terms of what's the best thing. And we want people to, to be heard and, and to, you know, we can't all do the work actually, but, but we can all, we can all have a voice. And so, so I think a takeaway for, for us is, is to make sure that we create more of these opportunities um, before our AGM in the fall to, to, you know, to tell people more and, and to make sure people are, 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 um, are having input and, and, and whether it's, it's, they're, they're asking us to think about something or they're, or they're, or maybe they have a question we can just answer, um, with, you know, uh, that, that's it. So, so I think, I think what, what, um, my big takeaway is, 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 you know, um, create more opportunities I hope that we can have more people that'll come out. We, I'm really happy that we got so many people in such a quality conversation tonight. Um, but I, but I do, I do. One of my takeaways is, you know, we'll promote the the, the replay on this, and people can can hear it. Um, but we'll offer, and John and Christian, we're good enough. Um, we did an advance uh, call, as you'd expect, and and they, I, I said, I was worried about it being a, a Thursday in July, and they said they'd do it again. So. We'll do this again too, and and we'll 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 have a little more of a straw man in terms of what we're we're thinking in terms of the I'll, I'll say it's just the you know the independent uh, operating model the divisional model and how it works, um, and then I think I think what the board has been committed to from the beginning is this is a big enough change even though it's not a takeover it's it's a 
it's a partnership. It's a big enough change that we should put it to our membership. Um, and we said that from day one. So um, just to, to assure everybody, we're, we're not, we're not, there's, there's no rogue actors here where we, our job is, is to work for you and, and to take care of, of, of our members, which are, you know, both the, the families and, and, and the special kids we're focused on as well as um, the volunteers that we, there's no way we could get it done without them. So it's, it's, everyone knows it's a, it's a lot of virtuous magic to pull this off. So, uh, so more to come. Um, yeah, stay tuned. We're, 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 I'll thank all of you. Uh, finally, I'll thank all of you for, for your engagement and coming out on a summer Thursday. Um, and um, I, I, Sam, I hope you're, you're, ca we're able to capture the comments too. There's some really good things in the comments field. So I appreciate those. Um, and I finally, I'll say to folks, imagine if anyone wants to talk to me um, about and learn more, uh, I'm, I'm wide open. I'm looking for that engagement. I'm just not looking for it until Oh, I don't know. I'm moving on Monday. So I'm, I got to admit, I'm, I'm in this blitz uh, of a move. So just, just, if I don't get back to a text or a call in the next few days, forgive me, but I'm, I'm seriously up against it um, to pull this off. So, uh, so, so that's my only uh, warning for you is I will be committed to, to talking to anyone, any, any time, but for the next 72 or so hours. Good um, luck with the move. Thank you. And good luck with your travels. So, so guys, thanks again. Thank you. Um, and and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk more. And we we normally um, uh, what we do at the end of these is we promote um, a feedback survey. So we will do that. There will be a survey for your comments uh, sure. for the track three members. Just a heads up as well. We'll do. We've got another this beyond a survey on this call. We we, we the, the survey we did last summer on the upcoming season was invaluable to people like Brenda and Kelsey and I who were working on the return to snow plan project January. Um, so we, we're going to get that survey out. Uh, George, George is very involved in that uh, with, along with Kathy, obviously um, to get that done. So look for that too. Um, I think everyone knows about our golf tournament uh, in coming up in, in just about a month's time. And so if, if you're, if you're interested and you're not signed up, please do tomorrow's the deadline for, for early bird um, air Canada tickets, double prizing. If you're not following us on social, please follow us on sp social, spread the word. Final thing, um, we're, we are, we are, um, we're a little concerned about volunteers um, and engagement and, you know, having people had a year off. So think about that in terms of what you can all do to make sure that we're spreading the word and we're getting folks back out. Um, and uh, any, anyone wants to talk to me about that any day, but for the next few, I'm, I'm all up for that conversation too. Um, and uh, that's that's it for tonight. And uh, thanks thanks again for 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 hanging in for for the the extra twenty minutes as well. Everyone, take care, stay safe, and we'll be back on snow in in a while. <laughs>